हेलो सलाम शलोम नमस्ते सताल अलोहा ओला चाओ बॉन्जोर बोना एंड प्रीवियस It's really, really good to be with you again, and I'm so happy that you're joining us today. And I'm sure you will be really happy you're joining us today because we have a very special guest, and it's Charlotte Barrett. And Charlotte helps women expand into the CEOs that they desire to be. I think that is so cool. Welcome, Charlotte. Hi, massive welcome. Um, thank you for having me on the show, Samia. And I can't follow suit with saying all the languages, but I would just say massive hello to everyone listening. And it's such an honor to be here today and have this conversation with you. Thanks again for having me on. Oh, it's my pleasure. And I'm so excited uh, to have you on because we are going to be talking about how to transition from your nine to five to having your own business. And I know that this is a topic that will be so exciting for our listeners because, you know, our audience is an audience of change makers, as I like to refer to my tribe and to myself and my people. And change makers are people who have a passion to create massive positive change in their lives and also in the world. And you can rarely do that when you're stuck in a job, especially if it is like a job that you don't really love to do. And so <laughs> a lot of change makers, you know, it's really their calling to start their own businesses, start their own organizations. And that can be a huge struggle. So I can't wait to learn more from you about how we can make that transition and make it more fun and easy. Exactly. It's one of my favorite topics. I'm so excited to just delve right in. And as you said there, um, one of the reasons I'm so passionate about this work is because you can just start to make those changes. And so many people are, there are people that absolutely love their jobs, which is amazing and it's great. But there are so many people who are not living up to their full potential because of something I'd love to discuss today, because of, of a lot of invisible structures that we have on us. And sometimes when you're in that corporate world or in a job mm. that you are you've then just uh, come to thinking that this is where you are at so this is where your future is going to be and this is why I love the work that um, we do that I do at my company and it's really about showing and expanding so you can actually lift your full potential do what I love to call uh, do the work of your God's calling and be able to profit really well from it as well and go out there and make a change and it is a transition and there's many unlearnings that needs to be done but it's such a beautiful journey and I also advocate that you can do both as well you can do take that time learn the skill learn the craft and transition really really nicely so very excited about where we're going to go with today's conversation awesome okay so I guess my first question for you is just like when you think about all the people that you've worked with and maybe you've made this transition yourself, what do you think is like one of the big challenges that come up in people's way when they're trying to make this transition from nine to five to having their own business? Yeah, so there's so many different nuances and everyone's circumstance is different. But I think um, just touching upon what I alluded to at the beginning, I think what has happened is in as us growing up in society, um, you know, we've done you talking a lot of uh, people growing up in West society, you go through the school system, you mm. go through the uh, university, college, wherever you may be in the world, but there's a lot of systems, a lot of societal pressure, and a lot of that is imposed on who you need to be right. so then as you even go through the employment uh, career maybe you, you start to develop a corporate career what happens is you then start to take on all of those views of who you need to be and you yeah. take that on as persona and that then becomes your identity so now when you maybe you've listened to a podcast like this you've um really interacted with change makers like there are in your community and that sparks been lit and you're like okay i want to now start my business 
the biggest obstacle, and this is why I always start with this work first before we go into a strategy, is the identity of seeing who you who you can be as well. And that's the massive block. It's really looking at identity of where you can go and that where you are right now doesn't dictate your future circumstance. And there's something that I always say to people, you know, if you're building your business, we can test where you are in terms of identity yeah. and what you truly believe. By simply saying, if you went into a networking meeting and uh, or something, you went into maybe a dinner party and someone asked you, what do you do? What are you going to say first? Are you going to say I'm a, whatever your job title is, or are you going to say I'm an entrepreneur? That's usually a telltale time if you've, if you've really bought in to the identity that you're an entrepreneur. And it could be really scary because we don't know what we don't know. But a lot of it comes down to adapting that you know maybe you're made for so much more and also that belonging I think worthiness and belonging that you can go out there you can be a change maker it's not just for someone else that you've seen that you've listened to or you've watched YouTube video listened to a podcast that actually that can be you and that's the biggest block and there's something um this come up just love to share this one of my mentors said that a lot of the times we um, will take the long way around to something, maybe it's our destiny, our calling, our business, because we don't feel that we belong and you know that could look like self-sabotage. But yeah. when we work on identity and we really take in that actually we belong over there, we are entrepreneur, we're change maker, we're healer, we can operate from like all of whatever it's going to be, then you're going to take the quicker route to yeah. that. But when you don't feel like it, so that's why identity is such a massive piece of it for me as well. That... It's such an excellent point. And, you know, in some ways, I wasn't expecting you to give this answer. Because mm. in my head, you know, if you had asked me that question, I would have been like, you know, it's the fact that most of us actually don't have any education around business. Like, for example, myself, I uh, became a coach and a trainer and a healer that I am, and I mean, I started my practice, my business around that work, because I love coaching, and I love training, and I love healing, and I got trained in how to be a coach, and a trainer, and a healer, but I never got trained in business, and so, you know, I I personally, in my head, was used to thinking that that was the biggest hurdle, but as I've listened to you, like, oh my gosh, you're actually right um charlotte that identity is a deeper and and more root cause part of the struggle because if truly um there is a lack of knowledge i mean that's a really easy problem to solve like it's so easy to get knowledge (laughs) especially when it comes to business there's so many so many trainings and like you know, like uh, books and gurus out there that you can work with and learn from. So getting the knowledge is not the hard part. Uh, But to own the identity, to figure out your identity as a business person, that indeed, I mean, that literally took me years to figure out. Yeah, and you're so right. I would say we're in the information age, and this is why I would say to clients, don't worry about giving out your free tips or things. That's not actually what people are buying. You can get, as you said, anything. We can go and find out any single thing. We can even learn to build a house if that was our desire. But yeah. what we and why coach them to come into space is that is that space to be held and to transform and really own that identity. Mm-hmm. And so many long time I did miss that, but it is. It's why. We skirt around, we, we do a take, we'll buy a program and won't do it because we haven't aligned with that identity to actually execute what is in the program. Mm-hmm. Subconsciously, at least know us executing is going to give us the results. So it means we have to step into that identity of that yeah. business. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Um, so when you talk about, you know, sort of um, becoming grounded in our identity and so forth, um, how do we actually do that? Hey, thanks for tuning into this episode. Hope you're getting value out of it. For your information, this episode has been sponsored by the Happiness 101 program. Are you a change maker, coach, trainer, or healer? Are chains of fear holding you back from making the impact and income you desire? 
using a unique combination of positive psychology and the spiritual wisdom of our most effective change makers. The Happiness 101 program helps you break through your limiting beliefs and manifest the abundance and success you desire with fun and ease. Interested? Book a free Happiness 101 exploration call with me, your happiness expert, Samya Bano. Just use my online calendar link in the show notes. Now, back to the show. Yeah. So it is a mixture of tools and it's a process and it's dependent on where you are. But one thing I will say, it's ongoing because every level you get, whether it's business, if you're going to look at monetary or impact, there's going to be another level layer to that to really uh, like unpeel and then go to that identity. So yeah. some of the things, um, just practically, some of the things I like to do uh, with clients when they come on board and I start working with them, I ask all my clients to write a letter from their future self to where they are now, just to, because we actually do, that identity is part of us. We just haven't merged and fully formed into it. And um, mm. if we have that in in us we wouldn't have wanted to take the steps in business but take we're talking in this example we would want to take the steps to start that business first and foremost and get my clients to get in tune and just start to feel and sense what the identity may look like it may not have embodied it yet and embodying does take a process but writing a letter from your future self to where you are now if you sit and you tap into yourself and you just sort of like spirit your life you can get so much wisdom that's just a practical first step, and that's what I get everyone to do. Then there's things that's going to be like, okay, at first it's going to be little things like building your self-esteem as well. So I would say every promise you're making to yourself, keep it, even if it's something so minute. Like, I remember I used to have this thing um, in terms of, okay, Charlotte, you are going to not leave dishes in the sink overnight because that's a promise you want to make. And I know that's part of the identity and that's something I was always working on. So just keeping those little promises to yourself and it can be as minute in terms of domestic stuff, but it can be a big thing like you're going to attend that webinar, you're going to listen to this podcast, you know, every week, whatever it may be, keeping those little promises to yourself. We think it doesn't make an impact. That starts to build your self-esteem. Once you build your self-esteem, you start to build the confidence. Once you have the confidence, you're going to go out and start to implement and do and take on that identity of the business owner. You're going to execute, even if you're in your nine to five, and maybe you're taking on the hat of employee where you are waiting for permission. When you go and start work on your business, maybe eight or 10, you're going to take that hat off and you're going to realize that actually you don't need permission. You can go and execute because you've built that confidence yeah. within yourself. They're little things, but they build up really, really strong start to help you um, really with that transition and that ownership of identity. Uh, that is so wonderful. That is really, I, oh my gosh, like I, pretty much everything that you mentioned, I, I think is so on point. And when you were talking about writing the letter, like from your future self to your current self, it actually made me realize that was actually one of the very first things. I did it in a slightly different context, but that was actually one of the very first things that I did that started me on my entrepreneurial journey. Um, and what happened in my case was that I was actually taking this class. I was about to graduate from college. It was my last quarter, uh, uh, and I ended up taking this amazing, amazing class called The Most Effective Methods of Creating Social Change. And um, wow. yeah, and it turned out to be structured sort of like a leadership development class. Like I had no idea what I was getting myself into when I took that class. I just knew it was going to be awesome because so many of my peers had taken it and they were all raving about it. But in any case, one of the things that they had us do was this really, really cool exercise where um, they were like, okay, um, imagine you're 30 years into the future and you've come back to your college reunion and now you're seeing your classmates um, after 30 years. And so you're going to enthusiastically and happily and um, you know, just with great energy, greet each other. 
because you're so excited to see each other after 30 years and you need to tell each other everything that you've been up to for the last 30 years. So um, like the context was a little bit different, but it was basically us, you know, as our future selves, telling our younger selves in a way like what we what we had been up to and what we want to be up to i love it so much wisdom and it yeah no matter how you sort of implement it in the different variations it's just powerful because us as human beings in this busy world we don't often get a chance or to connect with ourselves our future self ourselves whatever it may be wherever we are on um a healing so when you do that it's just like wow actually there's wisdom there's connection and when we start to connect yeah. that's when really start to thrive as well and one thing I do with I, um, my private clients I get them to send that letter when they start and then I post it to them at the end of us working together mm. yeah, which is because we just we need reminders all the time because life yes is- that is so beautiful I love those kinds of exercises too and there's I believe actually websites where you can go and you know you can um, write I think emails to yourself and have the uh, basically email scheduled to be sent to you at some future date. Amazing, love that. That's probably a more digital tech way than the letters, but yeah, I love that. That's a, that's really good actually. Yeah, it's really it is cool because I think when you're doing these kinds of exercises, as you mentioned. Um, this knowledge, these desires, these visions, like they're already inside of us, you know, and, and, but our conscious mind is not always aware of them and is oftentimes putting up obstacles in terms of, you know, it has its fears and so forth that it's dealing with. And so it might not be able to, realize what they are so if you can do an exercise like this that sort of helps you get out of your mind um uh, a little bit and i i think it helps you connect more with your heart your spiritual heart um uh, so then you're able to oh it just comes up so amazing yeah, absolutely. I'd love for the listeners, if you try it, let us know how it goes as well. Mm, yes, please do. Okay, so Charlotte, do you have any other amazing wisdom to share with us? Is there like another big problem that people have to deal with? So once they have a sense of their identity and they've started working on getting grounded in their identity, what challenge might come up next that they need to deal with yeah so the massive one which always comes up time and time again is time actually it's always a do I have time and I think even when you have all the time in the world you still wonder do you have time it's something I think as human beings always battling within time but practically there's some things we can start to really do to hone in if you're building particularly building your business alongside a nine to five and the first thing I always say is that it's going to be reassessing your priorities. You're not going to be able to do everything that you did before, as well as build this business, which is your future, which you're working towards for whatever um, goals or desires they are. So it's going to be learning to start, start to set boundaries, saying no to things. And an um, analogy I use, and I say with clients, so think of it, you are going on a long journey, you're walking along a path, you've got this backpack. You don't want to walk on that long path with a really, really heavy backpack. You want it to be as light as possible so you make it to the end of the journey. So it means you're going to have to start taking things out, dropping it, whether it's okay, maybe you can't help at the charity you're helping as much, reduce your hours, whether it may be you're going to have to ask partner or family or friends for support with children, whether it's you're going to need to drop that um, being admin of the family chat or the organizer, whatever it is, some things are going to have to drop. Not a lot of people will tell you this, but you can't do everything. We're not superhuman as much as we'd like to be. So making priorities, understanding what's going to be a priority. Then it's going to be, I say, um, just like you have your office hours with a job, you need to have office hours with your business because it's where the compound effect really takes into place. So yes, it, you can start as a little as an hour a day, but it needs to be committed. It needs to be consistent. And I would say the most practical tool, because I want to give some practical stuff as well as 
just putting an alarm in your phone. We all have our phones actually glued to us. So think of your office hours, put that in the phone, put it as alarm. And if you've got office at home, put that on the outside so everyone knows this is what's happening. And then practically then enroll in your friends and family around you on your vision. They need to, it becomes much more easier that way. If everyone knows why all of a sudden you're not doing as much, why maybe you don't seem as fun, why mm. maybe you're listen to podcasts in the car on the way whatever it may be so enroll everyone on your vision and then you get that support and it becomes much more easier and then time doesn't seem so much of a barrier and then there's some more practical things and just being dedicated to your daily non-negotiables which are the stuff because um everyone forgets we're in different seasons when we're in our business you're in the startup phase you're in the growth phase the momentum so understand when you're starting particularly that is about really proving your concept getting clients in and know which season you're in then you can really focus and you determine your daily non-negotiables by that hopefully that's helped with some practical stuff yeah i loved everything that you were sharing again um and my gosh several things i would love to follow up with you um but i guess the thing the first thing um that maybe i'd love to hear um, some of your perspective on is like i am with you that you know we need to get some support we need to you know enroll people in our vision um because you're right you can't do everything you're going to have to change all kinds of things in your life and so you have to be able to enroll people in your vision and i'm wondering like i know like for me when i began that process i met a lot of resistance like not everyone was ready and to support um and a lot of people were very skeptical and a lot of people were like, I mean, people, people have this tendency to, to think you're like, why would you leave your secure nine to five job? You know, you're, you're getting great benefits. You have a steady uh, income coming in, this and that. And so why would you leave all that? It's so risky to start your own business. And, you know, just all of this, uh, I mean, it, it, it's discouragement, you know, that, that you're getting from people. And a lot of it, I mean, is coming from the people who are closest to you and they're scared for you, they're concerned for you. And so it can be really challenging to deal with. Um, how do you have any tips on how we can do that? Yeah, absolutely. And it's so common. I remember one of my clients recently was like, I've had a best friend for years and all of a sudden now I'm doing business. She's just stopped speaking to me. I don't know what happened. And it's something that does happen. I've had to, um, you know, have my own encounters with family and friends. What I will say, you stick, I'm going to give you some tips, but you stick in it long enough and watch the tables do turn. I've been doing this for years and years and years now. And now I have so many people coming back to me, friends, family. Oh, how do you do it? What do you do? Wanting to be curious. But first and foremost, a lot of it starts because they've known you for a long period of time. They've known that other person of you, that person that maybe has switched careers or businesses every two a couple of months or every year. So they haven't had seen you be in something sustainable and long term. And often we just have to be able to prove that this is it. This is what we determine the passionate. And then people go where we lead first as well. That's usually a big thing. In terms of sometimes why friends and family often are maybe skeptical and I, I share this because sometimes it can help us understand why but a lot of the time it's family members dad and mom or someone it's usually because a they're concerned about you why why there's that discouragement and they haven't usually done that thing before so they if they see you got someone you see someone else going into danger and you can't help them it's going to make you feel like you're incapable so often they're trying to even protect their feelings like they're not going to be able to save you or help you if you do this business it goes awfully wrong whatever the worst can happen which usually isn't as bad as we think it is as well so often it's because it's out of protection and love, but they don't know how to help you or save you. And sometimes it can be a trigger with those around us that you have actually taken a step to jump out of your comfort zone, go and do something that they actually wish they did. 
which in it can be why some people will dress back and maybe not speak to anymore because it's like a trigger to them. It's like, oh my gosh, they've actually taken the guts, but they haven't arrived to that point, which is perfectly fine. So we have to take that on board. And the biggest thing I always say when you're jumping into entrepreneurship or even whether you're further down on your journey, no matter where you are, really surround yourself with other people who are doing the same things. Because as I talked about that identity, it's going to take time for you to build like that layer of armor where someone else's opinions doesn't matter because you've got so much faith in yourself. But that doesn't come overnight. So you really need to be putting yourself in situations with people who are doing it or who are a step ahead of you that can hold you when those doubts come in because they do come in. I'm not going to say they don't, but you need a you need to see other people doing it. You need people to speak into you and say it is possible for you to and see you in your highest form and your power. And then afterwards, when that does start to happen, it, it affects you less and less and less. But you have to give yourself a fighting chance because a lot of people will say they're starting a business. But that's the easy part, but staying in business is a much harder part. So I hope that's helped and that's given some context around why and what you can do to support yourself during it. Yes, for sure. That was very, very sensible. And I'm on board with you. <laughs> um, okay, so I, you know, just because of constraints of time. I think we're going to have to bring you back, Charlotte, because you have so much more to. to share with us and we're running out of time. Um, but do you have any like last tips or last words or like a last problem that you would like to highlight and we can quickly address, um, address what the solution to that is as well? Yeah, so... Um if you're, you're choosing your business, you've decided, we've talked about the actual practical tips and moving forward, it's then in terms of just being committed, commit to it for at least a year. Whatever you're doing, you, you can always tweak, but commit to it for at least a year if you're going in business and then have some sort of accountability because I say particularly um, women, we always put ourselves to the bottom of the list. If things come up, you're like, you've put your dreams on hold, put your business on hold, but commit to it for a year, be all in and i'm saying this all in doesn't mean you need to leave your nine to five immediately but be all in on this is your future and um, this isn't just a dream this is a future and you're going to figure out every way that you can you're going to find the information and support the resources you're going to do implement some of the tips we shared about you're going to connect with the wisdom inside but be all in because when you're half in i'm there i'm this i'm that you're not going to get the results it's going to take you longer to get where you're getting as well so just commitment part and it's really really and the consistency is probably the most boring part of business many people going into business are creative so they want to do this and that mm. and it can be counterintuitive but that's going to give you the stability to be able to go out there and really excel and do things that you want to do and be able to bring in support to help you where maybe aren't your strengths um so much as well so i just want to bring that around to that because it's boring is really instrumental in you staying in business yes oh my gosh Oh my gosh. Every time you share something, oh my gosh. I, I, I'm like, I love this. There's so much I want to follow up on. The point you made about commitment, oh, that is so true. And like for me, I know that it's like I had to keep reminding myself of that vision, that goal, that dream that my about to graduate from college self showed me about the change that I wanted to create in the world, um, you know, um, and not just for me, but like, I really, you know, it was like, I, I, I want to help people and, you know, and so like to remind myself of, okay, how is it that I wanted to help people? What's the most meaningful way that I can help people and um and and what was that more specific vision that my future self showed me to keep going back to that because otherwise it's like so easy to get caught up in the everyday drama that happens in life and sort of and then those other things begin to seem more pressing more urgent and this is like Oh, makes me think about um, the seven habits 
of most successful people. I, I hope oh, I said yes, that David right. Kobe, yeah. Kobe, and he said, you know, one of the biggest mistakes that people make who are not successful is that they spend a lot of their time taking care of things that are are feeling urgent and not to say that they're not urgent um but what they ignore in the process are the things that are really important but don't feel so urgent and so he was like actually the most successful people what they do is that they will deliberately carve out time to first do those things that are really important but may not be so urgent but they're really important and so you just have to commit to doing them and carve out time to do it consistently like you were saying charlotte so absolutely yeah, yeah. urgency or urgent things can sometimes be a distraction but i think that could be a whole nother podcast we can talk about <laughs> indeed yeah. indeed so for sure i would love for you to come back and um share more of your wisdom with us but in the meantime i'm just so happy and grateful that you joined us today and shared everything that you did share with us today and i just want to remind all of our listeners to please check the show notes make sure you check the show notes because we're going to be adding charlotte's links in the show notes so you can reach out to her and get some help and support if you are going through this process of transitioning from your nine to five to your own business um, because yeah that will make change this change a lot a lot a lot more fun and easy for you absolutely my ethos is exactly we want it fun and easy Thank you so much, Samia, for having me. It's been such a good conversation and we just scratched the surface, but loved every minute and it's been an honor. Awesome. So until we see each other again or hear each other again, I just wish you lots and lots of peace and joy.